Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, we're going to take a look at the pad tool, which is part of the part design workbench. The pad tool is used to take a sketch and convert it into a solid. It can also be used to add solid features to an existing solid once the sketch is placed on a face. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in several ways. You can buy me a coffee at the link below in the description. You can subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and leave a comment. Let's take a look at it. I'm using FreeCAD version 0.19, which was built on the 12th of July, 2020 for this demonstration. The sketch that I'm using for this demonstration is not a real world example. It is just an example that will help me illustrate how the pad tool works. I'm going to switch into the right view and turn on the main planes so you can see how it works in relation to those planes. Now this sketch was created in the XZ plane. So when I use the pad tool, it will be padded in relation to that plane. So I've selected the sketch. Now I'm going to start the pad tool. The options for the pad tool are drawn in the task view of the combo view. And it has five different types of actions, which give different options for the way it works. The types are dimension, to last, to first, up to face, and two dimensions. First of all, we're going to look at the dimension and the two dimensions options, because these are related to dimensions that you type in using a formula or just hard code some numbers. So we'll start with the dimension option. In this case, it has defaulted to a length of 10 millimeters, and the pad tool by default also pads in front of the plane so in this case it has padded 10 millimeters in front of the xz plane if i wanted it to go behind the xz plane i click on the reversed checkbox and that puts it behind the plane if i disable that it brings it forward again now there's another option within this type called symmetric to plane. And what it does is it basically halves the dimension that you want it padded in and puts one half on either side of the plane. Now, if I turn that on, you'll see that the sketch lies either side of the XZ plane and it is the same distance on both sides. You'll also notice in the task view that the reverse option is disabled. The next type we're going to look at is the two dimensions type. What this does is it allows you to define a dimension in front of the plane and another one behind the plane. You'll notice that there are two lengths. The length that is used in the dimension type becomes the dimension for the padding in front of the plane. And there is a second length option down the bottom where you can specify how far behind the plane you want it to go. So you can simply just edit those to make them whatever size you want. You can use the formula editor to create a formula if you wish. You'll notice that symmetric to plane and reversed are disabled because they do not make any sense in this case. The rest of this demonstration requires a solid object. So I'm going to switch the pad tool back to the dimension type, set the pad distance to be 50 and make it symmetric to the plane. And I'm going to switch to an isometric view so you can get a better idea of what's going to happen next. Now the next three options that we're going to look at allows you to pad a sketch out to a face. So I'm going to create a new sketch just on the solid. And I'm going to rotate it so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to draw a cylinder. 
and set its dimension, its diameter to be 10 millimeters. Not too fussed about its location within the model. And we'll just close that. Now you can see that I've got the sketch. I'm now going to open the pad tool again. The first of the face options we're going to look at is do first. And basically what that means is it's going to pad out the sketch until it hits the first face that it finds. As you can see here. Now if I zoom in and I switch to wireframe you'll see that it actually hasn't gone through, it is just stopped at the first face. The second option is to last, and this takes it to the last face that it finds. Which may actually be better described as being the second last face, at least in this example, because you'll see that it has gone through all the other faces and come to the, this face here and if I switch to wireframe again you'll see that it hasn't actually punched its way through to the top because in this case it is actually a solid and it doesn't make any sense to do so. And the final option or face type is two-face and what that means is that it allows you to select the face that you want to pad the sketch to. So we select the face by clicking on the face button and then we choose the face it goes to and as you can see it padded it to that face. If I want to change the face I click the face button again and select another face. I can even select the last face or the first face if I wish. Now you'll also notice that for those three options there is an offset tool. To be honest I don't know what it's for. In this example I can't make it work. So if you know what it's for let me know. When I've tried to use it it has always come up and said that the resulting shape is empty. The documentation doesn't say much about it, so I'm unsure what it's for. So far we've just demonstrated that the pad tool takes a sketch and creates a solid from it. If we look at it from the perspective of a woodworker, anytime you want to drill a hole in a board, you start with a solid board and then you drill the holes in it. And you can model it that way, but also in FreeCAD, you can use the pad tool and a single sketch to get the same thing. So with this example, I modeled it in the same way that I would drill holes in a board in my workshop. That is, I created a sketch of a rectangle, padded it out, then created another sketch with the three drill holes and then used the pocket tool to pocket the holes out. Using the pad tool, you can do that in a single sketch. So let me demonstrate how to do that. Firstly, I'm just going to delete the existing part and we will create a new part, a new body, a sketch, and we'll start it in the XY plane. And we're just going to create a rectangle. In this example, I'm not going to worry about fully constraining it. I'm going to do some just to make it a little bit easier for it to come together but it's not really necessary. So I've got the outline of my board and I'm just going to place some drill holes in the sketch and then I'm just going to close the sketch as you normally would. Now when I pad it out the pad tool will create a solid but it will automatically remove what will be drill holes. So if I click the pad tool 
and we'll set the, just set the dimension to 10 millimeters thick. And as you can see, we've got a solid, but it also has the drill holes. So that is a, another way in which you can achieve the goal of a board with drill holes. I found that this was a quicker way of creating this board with drill holes. It doesn't quite align with the way that a woodworker would take a board and drill holes in it, but from a modeling perspective, it doesn't make a difference. Well, I hope you found this interesting. The pad tool is a relatively simple tool, but it can be used to great effect. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in several ways. You can buy me a coffee at the link below in the description. You can subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and leave a comment. Thank you for watching. See you next time.